Hello everybody and welcome to First Attack here on twitch.tv slash jchenzor, also known as the Chenzor Dynasty. I am your host, James Chen, aka jchenzor. And if you guys are new to First Attack, this is the series of videos where I do my best to teach you guys the basics and fundamentals of fighting games. And I'm trying to teach everybody how to play fighting games from a very psychological perspective. And uh, let's just get started right away, because I know you guys are all eager to learn all about ranges and spacing. So if you guys remembered from the very first episode, I talked about all the different phases of fighting games. It starts at the neutral, then it comes down to advantage and pressure, then it goes to mix-ups, and then you start landing your combos, and then there's the okazeme. That was a little flow chart that I created early on, and we are on the neutral section right now. We're talking all about neutral. Last week, we talked about the footsies aspect of neutral. Now, when I describe that, I described the footsies triangle. However, there's a lot more to be said and expanded on, even though I talked about it in last episode. Ranges and spacing is something that's so much more important than most people probably think in fighting games. So let's get started with this right away. Let's talk about ranges and spacing here. So uh, like I said, last week we've already ta seen how ranges and spacing can affect footsies, right? I talked about all the different areas of footsies. Like one of them, for example, was poking. You want to poke, your whole goal is to actually hit the opponent. Well, you've got to know the range of your own attacks. Otherwise, you're just going to be throwing them at ranges that are too far away. You're not going to be hitting the opponent. What's the point in that? So you got to, you know, use your spatial judgment to know how far you are to know where your moves are going to connect but at the same time you want to know how far your opponent's moves are going to connect so you need to use the spacing to stand outside of the range of their attacks so you can do with punishing so you can have better with punishing again a lot of understanding where to stand in relation to your opponent so you know ranges and spacing obviously very important for a lot of the footsies however there's so much more to ranges and spacing. There, ranges and spacing isn't just about, you know, making sure your moves connect or making things whiff. Because ranges and spacing, and I'll get into this in the next slide, ranges and spacing should be the absolute driving force in your neutral. You know, when I talked about footsies in the last episode, I just talked about what footsies are. You know, you want to, you know, poke to beat movement, a forward movement. You use forward movement to beat with punishing. You use with punishing to beat poking. And so, you know, you're going to run into a fight and you're going to stand there. And I'm going to try to do this footsies thing that James was talking about. But, you know, there's no overall driving force behind that footsies. And what it comes down to is that ranges and spacing is going to be the driving force behind all of the footsies that you end up playing, all of the neutral that you end up playing. And as we go on, you'll start seeing more and more examples of this. I'll start showing you a bunch of stuff. And uh, once we get towards the end of the episode, I am going to go through one specific matchup from an old school game, uh, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, also known as Super Street Fighter 2 X in Japan. Japan. Um, I'll be going over the Ryu versus Guile matchup to really illustrate to you guys how spacing affects a matchup. And, you know, it's a very fascinating analysis, and I'll show you why it's one of the best matches in all of fighting game history. But, uh, Got a lot to go through before we get there. So let's get through that. So, again, you're going to be fighting for range. You and your opponent are going to be fighting for the spacing and the distance between your two characters. And as I mentioned in the past, there are things called Jay Chenzor's axioms. These are really key points that you should take away from these episodes. And for this episode, there's only one axiom here for you guys. And that is, you are spending most of the neutral trying to put yourself in ranges that favor you. Okay, I'll explain what that means by ranges that favor you in a little bit. But this is how you should be playing fighting games, okay? You should not just be arbitrarily standing or walking into whatever distance you feel like it. You are specifically trying to get to distances at a constant basis 
You're trying to get to these distances that favor you in the matchup. And this is the driving force behind all of the neutral. Uh, for example, rushdown or grappler characters. They want to be close, right? If you're a rushdown or a grappler character, in case you don't know what that means, rushdown are characters that just like to be aggressive, just pound on you, death by a thousand cuts, getting in your face, getting in your face. Grapplers are characters that like to defeat you by throwing you. And of course, you can typically only throw someone when you're right next to them, right? Most command throws, most regular throws take place when you two are close up. So if you are one of these type of characters, your whole goal in neutral is to get as close to the opponent as possible. On the opposite end of the, uh, of the spectrum, of course, there are zoners. Zoners, they call it zoning because you're basically turning the entire screen into a danger zone. The opponent cannot get in on you because you're doing such a good job zoning them away from you. Uh, characters with very long range moves, with very good projectiles that they can throw in multiple directions so it limits your character's movement. They want to stay as far away from you as possible. And then there are going to be the characters that want to do everything in the middle. These are the characters that actually want to just stay in the middle range. And they actually prefer fighting, not this further f maximum range, not right up next to each other, but right here, right in the middle, because they get that much more control in that situation. And um, let's just jump right into some examples here for you guys. Uh, I'm going to be using Street Fighter V as the examples again. Well, not all of them, actually. So... Uh, Scratch that. What we're going to do here, I want to show you some examples here. Uh, real world examples of where you want to be for ranges. For a character like Manat over here, you can see Manat over here, she has moves that attack really far away thanks to this orb that she has. So she has attacks that can reach this far away. And a lot of her attacks are going to reach, you know, at this distance over here. So for her, she wants to stand as far away from the opponent as possible. She wants to keep the opponent out. This is an example of what zoning is all about. So a character like Manat is going to prefer and base her entire neutral about building this distance between herself and her opponent. If she's doing a lot of work where she's purposely trying to move in on the opponent, you know, for basically no reason. There are times when Manat may want to get up next to you, especially if she activates one of her superpowers called uh, uh, the V-Trigger. If she's able to activate V-Trigger, she's very scary to deal with and maybe then she wants to be next to you. But for the most part when she's playing neutral, this is the space that you want to be in. Now, on the opposite end of everything, G is a rushdown character. <laughs> And he wants to be right next to you because he has so much pressure when he's up close. He's so scary and his mix-ups are ridiculous. And he's got a command throw that leads to gigantic damage. So as I mentioned, grapplers are people with throws. G is kind of a mix between a rushdown and a grappler, which is why he's one of the scariest offensive characters that exist in the game. And so he wants to be right here. He just wants to get right into your face and blow you up right here. So this is the distance that he wants to get into. So in general, if you're G, this is your end goal, is to try to get to yourself in a position where you're right next to the enemy and blow them up. Let's look at another game, for an example. Uh, a game that really, really emphasizes spacing and distance because of the range that a lot of the characters have. Let's look at a game, Soul Calibur VI. This is a weapons-based game. A lot of characters have very long attacks, such as Killick sitting here with his bow staff that you can see here. And I hope you guys can see the mouse that I'm moving on the screen over here. Uh, a little bit. So Killick, although he has this bow staff and it looks like he should be trying to, you know, fight you from farther away, it actually turns out that Killick's strongest range is about here. This is a little bit inside mid range uh, in terms of characters for Soul Calibur because some characters have ridiculous ranges on their weapons. So Killick 
wants to be in this range because at this range he has a lot of ability and he is able to pressure the opponent a lot more with moves such as back A, also known as 4A in, uh, in Soul Calibur uh, notation. 4A is a move that he swings his staff low and catches you at the legs that you have to crouch block, otherwise you get hit. And you can see this little low moniker down here and poor Siegfried is getting, you know, knocked over right here. This is a powerful tool for Killick because this forces the opponent into a high-low game and so he wants him to get into this range so that he can hit them at the feet to finally convince the opponent to crouch and then he could strike with a 3B, uh, three, uh, a three B, also known as down forward plus B, which can lead to big combos for him. So being at this range, being able to land something like this 4A that you see here is very vital for Killick to be able to fight. He wants to be at this range. Another example of this is Siegfried. And there's a reason why I picked these two characters on here. Siegfried, on the other hand, doesn't mind fighting at this range. He likes this range because Siegfried carries a very, 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 very large sword. He carries a very large sword and there is amazing range on this sword and he can actually overpower the characters that want to come in with a lot of the ranges that he has. He has moves like AGA which hit very quickly and very far. Uh, he's got all sorts of attacks like that but one of his main attacks that he's going to be using to really keep the opponent under control is uh, Ford Ford A, or also known as 66A, again in Soul Calibur language. Uh, if you understand it, you understand it. Don't worry if you don't. It's basically uh, the numbers represent directions on the controller. Uh, so 66A is essentially Ford Ford A. And from this range here, from this range, if he does 66A, he's going to hit you. Like, this is not even a joke. That is literally one after the other. I was standing here. I did 66A, pow! Look at this, look at this ridiculous range that he has. This is nuts. And so, you know, as a result, Siegfried wants to play kind of a little bit at this further range here. So he wants to be at this distance, whereas Killick wants to be at this range over here. But again, this is such a nice range for Siegfried because he can attack you here. And he can control the space, as we've talked about. He can poke from this range. He can aggravate people here. And then, by standing at this range, a lot of people will miss and he can whiff punish. You know, back to the footsies that we had from the last episode. I'm gonna go back to Street Fighter V for one more example here because Falk is a great character that shows you the mid-range game that a character may want to play. Falk is a character that while she seems like she's supposed to be a zoner, it actually turns out her strongest distance is this mid-range right here. Uh, you can see that there's a decent space here in between the two characters and this is where she wants to stand. This is the space that she wants to generate between the characters. Why is this? Because she has so many attacks that take advantage of this range, right? One of the best buttons here is standing medium kick. Standing medium kick is an excellent button for Falk. Now, that wasn't a perfect range here. I had to take half a step to be able to connect that, but that half a step is enough to be dangerous because standing medium kick is also a special move cancelable button. Again, don't worry about the technical details of that. We'll get to that in the execution portion of first attack. Uh, in a few weeks, but you can cancel this move into her fireball, into her projectile that she shoots out of her staff, which is a great pressure tool because when you block, when you force an opponent to defend the projectile, you're still in an advantageous position. So by standing at this range here, Falk has the option of just taking the smallest of steps and hitting you with this into her projectiles, and then she can keep the pressure going even if you block this. Also from this range, she has something like her Towards Heavy Punch, which reaches very far in front of her. So when you're trying to close in this distance, if you don't like this space and you want to move in closer to attack her, she can zone you pretty well with a Towards Heavy Punch and catch you while you're walking forward unexpectedly and do some damage that way. This is an example of the poking situation. 
an example of the controlling space, is her neutral jumping heavy punch. She can neutral jump and throw out this heavy punch, put herself in a spacing and a range from the opponent that they can't move in because she's throwing the staff diagonally down. In fact, her neutral jump medium punch also controls that space very well, except it goes straight. So she has two different timings. She can hit it early to control this way, or she can hit it late to control this way. Mirror image me, sorry, I'm, I have to go the other way. Uh, so she can go diagonally down this way or go straight this way. And she's controlling the space. She doesn't even want to necessarily necessarily hit you, right? We talked about this in the last episode. Controlling space is a preemptive kind of thing. You neutral jump because you're suspecting the opponent is going to do an attack that moves them forward or they're going to try to walk forward. It's a very preemptive thing. And so you're going to end up walking into her neutral jump attack because she's trying to control space. You do an attack. Last episode we saw uh, M. Bison psycho acts where he leans forward and attacks. Well, if you're Falk, you're going to want to stand exactly at this range against Bison so that when you neutral jump and then he does throw out a psycho axe, you can punish him on your way down. Again, controlling space, preemptive. You see how it ties in with last week's episode. And now you see when you want to do all these things, controlling space, poking, with punishing, you have an idea now of needing to stand at a specific space that is good for your character. You start to see how spacing and range affects how you want to play neutral. Because like I said, this is where Falk wants to be. But if you're G, you don't want to stand at that range. You want to stand at this range. You want to get in on the opponent and blow them up. Now, there are going to be situations where G doesn't want to do that, but we don't need to get in there. This is definitely where he's most scary and most dangerous. But this is where Falk wants to be. Now, let me ask you guys a question here. Let me ask you guys a very, very important question here. You know, this is the range you want to stand in. This is a pretty decent range here, you know. This, for Falk, this is a pretty decent range. And you'll control this area here. And this is your strongest range here. But what happens if the opposing character actually likes that range too? <laughs> and might actually be better <laughs> at that range than you? What happens in this situation where your opponent's range actually hurts you in this situation. Because <laughs> then we have a problem here. Then we have a situation here. And this is where I want to get into the next section of talking about ranges and spacing. And uh, this is going to be very familiar to a lot of people if you've been watching First Attack this whole entire time. But there's a reason why I've established a certain number of themes very early on because they're gonna keep coming back, right? I bet you all can repeat it after me. How many players is a fighting game? <laughs> How many players is a fighting game? Fighting games are a two-player game. And as a result of fighting games being a two-player ga two game, the other person has the ability to choose whatever character they want. They can choose whatever character they want, and this starts to delve into one of the most beautiful aspects of fighting games that I haven't even managed to have a chance to talk about yet. But one of the most beautiful aspects of fighting games is the character variety. There was a supplement about choosing your characters in different styles, but I haven't really gone into what happens when two people play against each other with a wildly different set of characters? If you have a game like, uh, you know, let's say Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which had, goodness, how many characters? Like 36, 40 characters or something like that? Uh, if you have a game with that many characters in there, the number of matchups you have possible are astounding. In a game like Street Fighter, there are Street Fighter 5 currently at this time has 40 characters in there. The amount of matchups that you can have is just insane. And every one of those matchups is going to change how you want to play the spacing game. 
And so, due to the character differences between, you know, here's the zoning character, here's the rushdown, here's the grappler, here's Falk who wants to control this middle distance, you know, because of this, due to just the natural nature of every character being so different, characters will have advantages over other characters and you know what? I completely forgot the last few words in that sentence is at different ranges. Different ranges are going to create different advantages for your characters based on the matchup. You know, a, 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 for example, like I said, in this Falk range over here against Cody here, this might be a great range because I can control this space really well. But as soon as I get to Abigail, that range that was optimal against Cody isn't necessarily optimal against Abigail anymore. That's actually not the greatest range you want to be. And in fact, in this situation here, Falk probably wants to play a little further back and zone a little bit more with raw projectiles, right? She wants to now stay a little further away, whereas against the majority of the cast, this, di this distance is great. But as soon as you fight Abigail, everything changes. Everything changes. You can't use the same strategy anymore. And this, like I said, is where a lot of the beauty of fighting games comes from. I really, really love that aspect about fighting games, that when you're fighting a brand new character, it's like a whole nother puzzle that you have to solve. And yeah, and that takes time, but like I said, even in the first episode, fighting games are hard. <laughs> they're going to take a lot of dedication. Uh, they're going to take a lot of work. But again, the rewards are absolutely worth it. When you start feeling this difference and you get to a new character and you're like, I don't know how to fight this character. What the heck? Am I'm standing at my range and I'm getting destroyed. Let me figure out a different way to play the fight. And then you figure out a different way to play the fight. And then you start to win and then you start to win, trust me, the feeling is absolutely fantastic. It's so great. But the one thing I want to emphasize is that when I talk about characters putting themselves at a range in which they have, or putting your character to a place where they have an advantage, the advantage is almost always defined by the distance between your characters whether it's a game like guilty gear and you can double uh guilty gear and you could double jump or marvel where you could super jump up to the sky or if you're up there and your opponent is down there the distance and angle between your characters now most fighting games are very horizontal so it's really mostly just about this horizontal space tekken soul caliber street fighter mortal kombat you know very horizontal based game but there are a lot of games that do take into account a little bit more height and that's where the angle comes in but the distance from your opponent is always going to be what defines what when you have an advantage over the opposing character before we get into the key example here coming up, I just want to show you again in stills another example so you can kind of get an idea of what we're talking about before we jump into Ryu versus Guile in Super Turbo. And for that, I turn to a game, uh, Mortal Kombat 11. Mortal Kombat is a very interesting game because characters have teleports. They have all sorts of really interesting directions of attack. Uh, and there's a lot of variety in here, so it's actually a really crucial game for understanding distances and ranges because you can go a full screen away and Scorpion's going to teleport and attack you from this side over here all of a sudden. Like, he's just going to go whoop and then show up over here and attack you. So it's uh, a really interesting kind of uh, uh, a setup when you play this game here. But if you look at this range right here, right now, between Kong Lao and Cabal, now, normally, this is a good range for Kong Lao. Kong Lao has a lot of good attacks that can cover this distance. He has the towards one, towards one, two, which actually works out pretty well to cover this space and go in against the opponent. And, you know, it's safe on block. He can't be punished for it. He also has a forward two, which hits really well from this range as well. However, in this particular matchup, especially when Cabal is using the clean cut variety here. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with MK11, uh, when you play a character, they have multiple variations. They have like different styles that you can choose from that'll affect what they have. This particular style has one move where Cabal can jump in the air and throw this fireball. 
And you can see Cabal is up here in the air and he throws this fireball diagonally down here. Okay? Throwing this fireball diagonally down. This is why suddenly for this range, Kong Lao is not particularly going to be strong in this range. Because Cabal controls this area so well by neutral jumping and throwing this fireball diagonally down. It covers all this space over here. And if you're standing over here, you're going to be blocking it. And if the more you try to get in on the opponent, you'll be at this range, you get pushed back, you'll try to attack him, and then he jumps up and throws another one down, and you get hit by it. It's a very annoying thing to take care of. So, even though Kong Lao has a distinct advantage at this range against a lot of other characters, against Cabal, this range starts to suck. So now, if you're Kong Lao, what do you do? Well, you gotta change things up. You gotta play this a little differently than you did before. And so instead, what you wanna do is you wanna be closer to Cabal, right? You actually wanna be in Cabal's face. You want to be able to pressure him and mix him up here. And if he jumps and throws a fireball and you're close enough, you can get close enough that you can crouch under it, you see, Kong Lao is just chilling here, checking out Cabal, but this fireball is going to go all the way diagonally down this way, and it's going to go over Kong Lao, and Kong Lao can punish it. So he can actually punish Cabal when he lands uh, at this situation. What's interesting too, though, is that this also becomes an advantageous range for Kong Lao. So now what's interesting here is you're starting to see that Kong Lao wants to be here or here, but in this space right here is a dead zone. This is not a good space for Kong Lao here. If you put yourself at this distance away from Cabal, this is not good. So now as the Kong Lao player, you're starting to see what I'm talking about here right now, right? Spaces and ranges define how you want to play the neutral. So if you're Kong Lao, this is where you want to avoid as much as possible. And you want to be here, and you want to be here as much as possible. So your neutral is going to be affected by this. Why do you want to be here? Well, one, if Cabal throws this fireball, you see it doesn't reach me. It's not a threat. He can throw it all he wants, but I can just bide my time over here, and he's not actually doing anything. Secondly, at this range, if I predict he's going to do this, I can actually jump forward, go over the projectile that Cabal is throwing here, and dive kick. And I will actually hit Cabal. This is actual range that I did a dive kick, and I was able to hit Cabal, and the fireball just went harmlessly under me. So at this range, that fireball projectile from the air at this range is not as much of a threat for Kong Lao. So me as a Kong Lao player, if I find myself in this range, I either want to push hard for myself to get forward to get into this range, or I want to pull myself back and get into this range. I don't want to stay in this range. And if I stay in this range as much as possible, I'm going to lose. And this is the range that the Cabal player is going to try to keep me in. Cabal is going to try to stay in this range as much as possible possible and you are going to be fighting against him so let's talk about this a little bit more let's talk about this a little bit more the interesting thing about this is when i talk about this when i talk about all this ranges when i talk about all this spacing it sounds very logical methodical like okay so that means if i'm in this distance i want to walk to this or if i'm at this distance i want to walk the hardest thing about fighting games is all of this distance play happens so fast. The spacing between you and your opponent that you are fighting for happens so quickly. The ability to change from being in an advantageous position to a disadvantageous position may change every second. It may change every half a second. It could change. It could take forever to change, but it can happen so quickly that you are adjusting on the fly as you go. And so at this point in time, what really makes this difficult to learn is that you really have to understand 
how to control that space on the fly. And again, fighting games are a dance. This is another uh, you know phrase that I keep repeating. Fighting games are a dance. You saw in the last week's episode when I wanted to whiff punish uh, M. Bison's psycho axe, the, the little down forward heavy punch where he swung, and I was able to do that. You saw me dancing with him the entire time. When he moved forward, I moved back. When he moved back, I moved forward. But if I have this idea that I want to be at specific ranges for my opponent, then if I'm trying to keep this far range from Cabal like Kung Lao is doing and Cabal runs up here, now I have a choice. Do I want to dance with him by getting away from him again? Or do I want to dance with him by jumping up close to him again? Right? So now you've got this interesting dance and you've got uh, multiple decisions to make. You've got uh, different options to take at this point. So you can now actually fight for them and base your entire movement and your footsies on where the opponent is. Uh, and what's tough about this is, like I said, you don't have time to think about this. If you think that you're going to, like I'm teaching you this, and you're going to jump in the game, and you're going to be like, I want to be at this distance. Doot, 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 doot. Oh, he walked away. Let me move closer to him. Oh, he walked away. Let me back off. Like, that's not going to happen, okay? Like, what you need to do is you need to start understanding your own emotions. You need to understand your own psychology when you're playing these games, okay? As you play a fighting game, you're going to start feeling when the opponent has an advantage. If you fight against that cabal and you walk into that distance and he starts jumping and throwing that projectile down at you all the time and you just keep getting slaughtered by it, you keep getting hit by it and you get super frustrated by it, that is how you learn that that is not the range you want to be in. <laughs> so if you feel uncomfortable and you are losing at these ranges, get out of that range. And you're going to be able to learn to do that the more you play fighting games. What happens to a lot of people is that they lose to a tactic like that. This is why zoning is so effective. Again, zoning is keeping you out, you know, make, letting, making sure that you can never get in on the opponent. If you can zone properly, the opponent basically never gets to try to exact their offense. And it's a very frustrating thing to do. But a lot of people fall victim to that because the opponent is keeping you at the maximum zoning range that they want, and you don't realize this. And so all your attempts to get in, to jump over things, to dash in at things, are playing right into their hands, and you don't realize this. When I played Alpha 3, when I played Street Fighter Alpha 3, I specialized in fighting Dalsims with Zangief. And a lot of the times, when I tried to get in on Dalsim, if I started failing, I would jump backwards. I would actually pull myself away from the fight because at full screen, my disadvantage wasn't as bad as when I was slightly inwards. So I would pull my, I just got myself out of there. If I kept trying to push at that range, I would lose. But if I pulled myself away, I had ways to get myself past that danger zone and then I could get in and start causing damage at that point. So again, it's about understanding where your opponent's maximum, maximized range is from you and trying not to be there. And as you play, you'll start to figure this out. You'll get an innate sense of this. And like I said, learn to recognize and understand why you feel uncomfortable or why you're getting frustrated in a fight, right? So if you're in a situation that the opponent, like Falk, like let's say you are fighting a Falk and they're standing at that mid-range and they're hitting you with standing medium kick into fireballs all day and you can't do anything about it and then they neutral jump and they keep controlling the space so well and you're running into every, everything, you're playing right into their hands. You're staying at that mid-range distance trying to find a way to break the wall. Why play at this range where Falk is the strongest when you can back off a little and try to find a way to bypass that range completely, right? There are lots of different ways to do that based on character that you're picking. Some characters may not have easy ways to do that, but in essence, you just don't want to be in those ranges. You don't want to be in those spaces. So again, footsies should always be defined by the spacing and the range. Because every character is different, you are going to have so many different 
advantage, disadvantage, spacing from the opponent, and you want to get to the ones that are advantage for you. And like I said, it happens quickly. It's very, very scary. It's very, it's, 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 it's very hard to, to, to process. And a lot of times you're going to go by feel. This is where a lot of the heart comes in, right? This is a lot where the heart comes in because as soon as they back away, you know that's not good. So you push forward and then they move forward and then you don't want to be there. So you back away. You'll start feeling these kind of things and you have to learn and understand that. And just as a side note, you know, you're doing this even though you don't realize it. You are feeling these feelings even though you don't realize it. You are feeling this advantage and disadvantage all the time when you're playing the fighting games. And the reason why I 100% truly believe that is because everybody hates mirror matches. Everybody hates mirror matches. I hate playing this mirror match. A mirror match, if you don't know what that is, is when you and your opponent are playing the same character. When both of you are using the exact same fighting game character against each other. And the reason why this starts to feel uncomfortable, everybody hates it. And when you actually start to play it, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some good mirror matches out there. Okay, there are some very, very fun mirror matches out there. Uh, but for the most part, most people hate mirror matches. And I'll tell you why you hate mirror matches. The reason why you hate mirror matches is because you have this innate feeling of advantage and disadvantage in terms of range. The problem with mirror matches is no matter what distance you are from the opponent, you're 50-50. <laughs> Every distance you go to, you have the same options as they do as long as you're both in neutral. If you're walking back and forth, every range is... So you can't find a comfortable range to walk to. There's no range in which you get to and you're like, okay, now I have the advantage. Or, oh, he has the advantage, so I better get out of this range. You can't do... You're, that, everywhere you go, you have the same options as the other person with the same range. And so it's a very frust... It feels frustrating because a lot of people, when they say they play mirror matches, they're not sure what to do. They don't know how to approach the fight. And the reason for that is because you can't find that position in which you are advantaged over the opponent. So, like I said, all of you are feeling this. All of you know how to do this. You're just not cognizant of why it's happening or where, you know, when it's happening, where it's happening, but, or what is happening. But as long as you are aware of this now, now that I've talked all about this range and spacing, you know, it, it absolutely becomes one of the most fundamental aspects of playing fighting games. All of your footsies, all of the neutral that you're going to play is going to be based on that. That is the most important driving force of your footsies is putting yourself in that advantageous uh, position.